Hello everyone. So welcome back. So this is the last, really the last one on the uh, nuclear physics. Okay. Um, so uh, last time we um, discussed about the um, the property of the nuclei. Okay. We are talking about the binding energies. We are talking about the uh, radioactivities, and we are talking about the uh, radio uh, nuclear models. Okay. So now uh, today we're gonna uh, this video we will discuss about the um, decay processes. Okay. So let's start from the first one, the alpha decay. Okay. Um, so alpha decay, it's we have the atomic nu uh, nucleus that emit the alpha particles. So the alpha particle is basically it's the helium nucleus. Okay. Uh, we call this one as a transform or decay because uh, we finally end up with a different nucleus. Okay, so for, for the alpha uh, decay, so we start with the AXC and then it's decay to Y um, A minus 4, C minus 2 plus the alpha particles. So this one it's the parent nuclei, parent nucleus, and this is daughter. Okay. Uh, so this is for example the the decay of the um, uranium. Okay. Um, plus helium two four or the uh, radium of 226, 88 to radon, 222, 86 plus helium, 24. Okay. Um, so, when the particle decay, okay, we need to discuss about the what we call the disintegra disintegration you mean uh, uh, energies? So it's energy that released during the radioactive decay. Okay. Um, so the um, disintegration uh, energy, uh, we use the key, uh, symbol Q. Okay. So it's the mass of the nucleus X. Okay. Minus mass of the nucleus Y minus mass of uh, helium. Okay, and then check, convert it to the energy. So you take it like C square. Okay, and um, for whatever unit you prefer. Okay, if you would like to get Q in joules, you need to have a mass in kilograms and you t time uh, 3 times 10 to the 8 um, square. Okay, of the meter per sec, meter square per second square. Or uh, if you put it in the uh, U units, okay? So in this case, we multiply it by 931.5 MeV per, uh, uh, sorry, uh, MeV per U. Okay, and then you get the energy of the MeV. Okay, so what exactly the Q? Q is the amount, amount of the rest energy that transform and appear to be the kinetic energy of the daughter particles. Okay, Q is the amount of energy, um, I would say amount of the rest energy. Okay which transform and appear uh, in the form of kinetic energies of particles. Okay. So in this case, you have um, uh, radium, which is uh, at rest. And then um, it's decay, so it, you get radon, and then uh, and the 
alpha particles. Okay, and you have learned that uh, if you summation the mass, something gonna be different. Okay, and that go to the the difference uh, in mass that you get. Okay, um, you have the the left the the diffracted mass, and then uh, with that diffracted mass is converted to energy, and that energy it's transferred to the to the daughter particle, and that's become the kinetic energies. So radium at rest when it's decay to radon and the alpha particle, both are not rest, so both can go uh, from the uh, from rest can travel. Okay, so it's come with the kinetic energies. So uh, if we um, try to look at uh, calculations just to give you a rough idea of uh, the, um, the Q and also the, the, um, the kinetic energy of the particles, okay? Um, so the process, um, uh, radium, uh, Two two six eighty eight to radon eighty six two 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 plus uh, alpha particles. Okay, so the Q value is the mass of the nucleus of the radium. So this I pick up from the table two two six point two zero two five four one zero U minus uh, radon is two 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 zero one seven five seven eight u minus helium four five zero zero two six o three u and then you multiply it by nine hundred uh, thirty one point four nine four mega elantrovol per u okay so finally you will get about four point it's seven mega electron volt. Okay. Then, if you would like to get the kinetic energy of the alpha particles, okay, um, what you have to do is trying to solve um, from the conservation of the energy and momentum. Okay. So, if you consider the conservation of momentum. So you get before you get zero, right? Um, for after you get mass of the uh, radon, B radon. Uh, maybe I can use just uh, okay. mass of radon, V of radon minus um, mass of the alpha particles, V of the alpha particles. Okay, because it's going the opposite way. Okay. Um, then you have the Q value. So as the definitions, Q value is the amount of the rest energy that transform and appear in form of the kinetic energy of the particles. Okay. Um, maybe if you need to make it more clear of the daughter particle. Okay, so the Q is half of m uh, radon v radon square plus half of the m alpha v alpha square. Okay, so we can try to um, since we would like to have the um, kinetic energy of the alpha particle, so basically we need half of m alpha v alpha square right so what we're gonna do is write the velocity of the radon in term of the alpha so half of m radon uh, v radon square is basically m alpha v alpha um, divided by m radon square plus half of the m alpha v alpha square okay so we need to arrange the term okay so you get half 
of the M alpha um, V alpha square. Okay. What we have here is uh, M alpha square, right? We take one, so it's remaining one divided by M radon. Is correct? Um, yeah, so uh, um, yeah, and then plus one, right? Okay, so now we know that this is what you would like to find. It's the kinetic energy of the alpha particles. Okay, so finally you get the kinetic energy of the alpha particles it's equal to the q okay and then you uh, manage this uh, bracket in term of in term inside the bracket so it's uh, m of r divided by m alpha plus m of r okay so this is the kinetic energy of the um, radon And you can see from the formula is that it depends on the Q, where Q is exactly, uh, you know the value exactly. And this depends on the mass of the, um, of the daughter products, so, uh, of the daughter products, including radons and the alpha particles. Okay, so it means that if you have a small mass, it takes a lot of energies. Okay, if you have a high mass, it will not take a lot of energies. So you can see that if the kinetic energy of alpha is this term, so you can answer easily that the kinetic energy of the um, radon is going to be Q uh, M alpha divided by M alpha plus M radon. Right? Because when you sum this term, it's going to be Q. Right, and you can see that the kinetic energy of radon is very small because the mass of alpha is very small compared to the mass of radon. Okay, so the kinetic energy, it's mostly show up in the uh, uh, light particle. Okay. Um, before we move, so just one small comment to note is that if the Q is negative. So the process cannot happen, okay? Like uh, you have the uranium of 238, uh, 92, and then it's decay to 237. Uh, I cannot remember this, this name. And then uh, the protons, for example. So in this case, it cannot happen, it cannot occur. Mm -hmm. Q is less than zero, okay? Because the mass of the product, the sum of the mass of product, is larger than the mass of the uranium in this case. Okay. Next, it's about the process called the beta decay okay so for the beta decay uh, it's basically the decay of the electrons okay so if you start from the axc so you get a new elements with the same a and then this is a c plus one plus electrons okay and the same but for the uh, positrons. Okay. So this process, it look okay. Okay, the, uh, the the charge is conserved, right? So it look okay. Charge conserve. There are several things that conserve in this formula, so it look okay. Okay. Um. But when the result of the experiment come, it looks strange. 
Okay, so if you compare the um, plotting of the kinetic energy of the alpha particles and the beta particles, you can see that the kinetic energy of the alpha particle they almost discrete. Okay, it's um, it it have some kind of the random, but um, it discrete. You cannot see the the full spectrum of that. Okay, why do you have an idea? If you don't know about the beta particle before, can you explain that why the alpha particle uh, plot uh, of the kinetic energy and the number look to be discrete? Because if you look back um, to the energy of the alpha particle that we calculate before, okay, so I put the equation here. So Q equal to, uh, sorry, the Kinetic energy is equal to Q, okay, M of R divided by M of R plus M of uh, alpha particles. Okay, so if you know exactly what is M of R and M of E, and you know exactly the process, this number needs to be discrete, it needs to be unique. Okay, if you know the uh, no exact process. Q is constant with the same process. Yeah, because Q is taking care for the um, difference between um, the parents' nuclei and the daughter nuclei. Okay. But you say yes, but is it different here? It should not, right? Uh, because the Q should define by the energy of the daughter uh, of the parents minus the energy of the daughters, and that's it. But if the kinetic energy of the beta particles start to be spread, it means something else needs to happen. Okay, something else that can suck the energy out from the electrons. Okay, Ch uh, look, uh, take the energy out from the electrons, and um, it cannot be detected because if we de can detect, I mean, we should write it here in the equation already, but we didn't. Okay, something that have the energies and cannot be detected. Okay, so that is um, um, the conclusion from that time. Okay, something that happen has the kinetic energies and invisibles. Okay, to the current, to the uh, knowledge at that time. Okay. So, um, in 1930, Pauli proposed that this particle uh, must be present in a decay product, okay, and carry always the missing energy and the momentum. And Fermi later named this particle as the neutrino, which is, I uh, mean, little neutral one. Okay, because it's electrical neutral and it has a little and it's no mass. So that's why we call it as a neutrino. Okay. And what is the property of the neutrino? It, neutrino has the zero electric charge. Okay. The mass is either zero or very, very small. Okay. Um, we have the spin half. Uh, we maybe not need to interest it at this point. Okay, it's topic in the particle physics, but it's not covered in this course. Um, it interacts weakly with matters and therefore very difficult to detect. This is correct because if you can detect that, uh, you you should know already that this process is not correct. Okay. So. Um, from the knowledge of the neutrino, so the interaction should look like this. Um, okay, or
So this is the neutrino. Okay, but um, we don't need to care about the type. Uh, there is a type. Okay, so you can see that I write mu bar. I write this one is mu. Okay, so we don't uh, we don't talk about this. We don't discuss about this at this point. Next is um, okay. Now we get the knowledge of the beta decay. Okay, um, so what we would like to do next, okay. Um, we're going to do following the, the alpha decay, okay. Um, so what we're going to do is calculate the Q value. But in this uh, beta decay, you just need to be very be careful when you read books, okay? It will write something that different than what we have done before, okay? Um, but first, um, let's look about the, um, the beta decay first. So for the electrons. So you have, um, starting from the parents, AXC to the A, C plus 1 of Y plus uh, electrons, right? And then plus the antineutrinos, okay? So what exactly happened? When you're looking at that, you say, yeah, but it's the same A. So it's something that increasing the number of protons, but still the same A. So if you're looking in this point of view, you see, yeah, but it's uh, it's look like neutron, it's transfer transform into protons plus electron plus anti antineutrino, right? Okay, sorry. Uh, okay, continue. So we start from the neutrons um, decay to proton and the electron and the neutrino, right? So it's like ne neutron de uh, change the type and then it's kick out electrons and neutrino out from the nucleus. Okay, so this is how the process look like. So the question is that, is this process possible? Of course it's possible, right? Because we see this process, we know this decay, so it's possible. The next next question is that, and if we have the free neutron, can it be can it decay? Okay, so if you would like to answer that, you need to go back and see the mass of neutron and protons. Okay, you go back to see the mass. Okay, the mass of proton is less than the mass of the neutron. Okay, which means the decay of the neutron is possible. Okay, so this process is possible um, for the um, isolated uh, neutrons. Okay, it not need to be in the nucleus. For nucleus, clearly it can, but for isolated, it's also possible. So that's why we can say that the, the neutron can decay. Okay, but for the proton, as uh, as long as we know, it cannot be decay, okay? Or if it, if it can decay, it's going to take very long, and we don't really know about that, okay? We, we have some experiment to measure on the, um, to measure on the, uh, the proton decay. Now, we would like to um, discuss about the Q value, okay? So from the process, you can write, uh, the Q value, right? So it's the mass, it's the mass of the nucleus of X minus mass of the nucleus of Y minus electron, um, mass of the electron and minus mass of the neutrino. Okay, and then whatever c square or 951 
Um, so we treat mat of Gentino is very small, so it's roughly zero. Okay. So you should get these kind of equations. However, if you read the books, it's going to write something different. Okay. In survey, um, just read carefully. So they write uh, the Q value in form of the mass of the neutral atoms. Be careful. Mass of the neutral atoms, not the mass of the nucleus. Okay. So, uh, what is the mass of the neutral atom? For example, what is the mass of X? Okay. The mass of X is combined uh, from the mass of nucleus of X, right? Uh, plus mass of the uh, electrons. So electrons have C electrons, right? The number of electrons is equal to the number of the protons. C electrons plus mass of the electrons. This is neutral. I can say neutral. So neutral means the number of electrons it's equal to the number of protons. Okay, neutrals are uh, atoms. Okay. You can say, yeah, but they have the binding energy, right? But you that you can ignore that. Okay. Um, so the this integration and en uh, energy, the Q value, mass of the nucleus of X. It's mean mass of X minus C mass of the electron. Then you take minus mass of the nucleus of Y. So it's mass of Y minus uh, C plus one, right? Because Y have the C plus one uh, protons, uh, mass of the electrons, okay? And then minus mass of the electrons, and then c square. Okay. Then you can see that you have here minus c. Okay, m electrons. So you have minus c. This is plus. So it's plus c plus one. Okay. And then minus one. So you get zero. Okay, so finally you get this integration energy. It's equal to the mass of the neutral atom of X minus mass of the neutral atoms of Y. Okay, uh, C square. This is what it's written uh, in survey. Okay, just be careful when you read the books. Make sure that you understand uh, the formula and the symbol. Because sometimes they will write you some explanation, but you don't really get it. What does it mean? Okay. Um, so now we do it for the electrons. So we do it for the uh, positrons. And we're going to look at if it's the same or it's different. Okay. But at first, look back in the same thing. So for, for this uh, beta decay of the positrons, you have the um, x of a c um, to a c minus one of y plus forty positrons plus neutrino. Okay, so in this case, it look like the number of the proton decrease. Okay, so it look like proton it's changed to neutron plus positron plus neutrino okay so this process it's okay if we are talking about nucleus we see that this process happened but this is not okay it's not happen it's not happen for isolated protons okay because mass of the proton is less than mass of the neutron. Okay. 
Okay, so now we do the um, Q. Okay, it's the same. So we're talking about the mass of nucleus of X minus mass of the nucleus of Y uh, minus mass of the positron, which is uh, basically mass of electron. It's the same. And then C square, you take the mass of neutrino to be zero. Change it to mass of neutral atoms and number of the electrons. Okay, so it's mass of X minus C mass of the electrons minus mass of Y, right? Uh, minus C minus one mass of the electrons, right? And then minus mass of the electrons and then c square okay so mass of the positron just to remind it's equal to the mass of the electron okay they are they are equal they are particle and antiparticle so have the same same mass but the different uh, the difference is charge only okay so clearly you have mass of neutral atom of x minus mass of the neutral atom of y okay and then um, you have what you have mass of the electrons okay so you have minus c this is plus so it's plus c minus one and then minus one okay c square so this cancel so you have minus two so in this case you're gonna have the q value as the mass of the x minus mass of neutral atom of y minus two m electron c square okay okay so this is um, the beta decay um, for the um, uh, for the positrons. So hope that you follow. Okay. Um, before we move next, just to say that um, if you're looking back to this um, balance, these equations, then you say yes. But then, if nucleus instead of e ejecting a positron out it try to pick the electron it try to capture the electrons okay so it's like you move e plus to this side okay you try to so you have the nucleus and then the nucleus trying to capture electrons okay so what you have is that you have the nucleus Nucleus is trying to capture electrons. Okay, so you're gonna get the new one with um, it's uh, C minus one and A plus the neutrino. Okay, so this is uh, th this process is called electron um, capture. Okay, and you say yeah, it look identical. Right, it looks identical. You move electron, uh, positron to another side. But if you think about the Q value, okay, so I maybe shot this. So I go to the directly to the mass of the neutral atoms. Um, so mass of the neutral atom of uh, mass of the nucleus of X, it's gonna be mass of the neutral atom of X minus C M E, right. And then plus m electrons because now electron it's in the parent side okay and then you minus m of y minus c minus one right minus c minus one uh, m of e okay and then c square so you have mx minus m y okay and then you have minus c here 
Um, so you have m electrons um, minus one. So this is plus plus one. Um, oh, sorry, minus c plus c. Ah, sorry. Maybe I should not write this. Just make it a little slow. So I have m electron minus c plus one plus c plus uh, minus one. Okay, which becomes zero. So the q it's equal to the neutral mass of x um, neutron neutral atomic um, atom of y um, c square. Okay. You can see that these two process are roughly the same thing, but um, but um, the, the Q value is different. Okay. So don't try to remember the formula, but try to understand on how this thing can be solved. I mean, how, how I solve this one. Okay. And it's easy for you because if you really need this, um, you have the materials, you can open it. Okay. When, when you have, when you are doing the exam. So um, the next one, it's a decay process of uh, another application of the beta decay. Okay, one of that is what we call the carbon dating. Okay, so you have the cosmic ray from uh, from sun or from the um, uh, from the galaxy outside. It's come and interact, so it's make the neutrons and nitrogen to change to carbon. Okay, and the protons. The carbon fourteen. Um, it's not the stable nuclei, okay? The carbon-14 is not a stable nuclei. However, it can absorb um, by the tree. And then from the tree absorption, it go to the, the um, animals and then go to humans, whatever. So it's spread around in the environment, okay? So this can happen when uh, there is, when uh, the, the organism is still uh, living, okay? So it's leave a, uh, uh, um, when it still grow up, okay, that can, uh, it can have, it can absorb the carbon-14, okay? Um, the ratio between the carbon-14 and carbon-12, it's basically uh, roughly constant, okay, with these activities, uh, with this ratio, sorry. Um, however, when um, when the organism dies, okay, when the organism dies, um, what happens is that the carbon-12 is the same. However, what is reduced is the carbon-14. It's reduced, decreased, okay, when um, organisms die. Because it cannot absorb anything. I mean, it cannot absorb the new carbon-14, right? It cannot eat, it cannot breathe. So it doesn't get the carbon-14. So the carbon-14 um, will not increase anymore. And then carbon-14 start to decay. Okay, it start to decay to nitrogen-14 plus uh, electrons, okay? So, um, in this case, uh, the ratio of the carbon-14 and the carbon-12 is less. Okay, so by um, detection of the carbon-14 or the ratio of the carbon-14 to carbon-12, you can estimate the age of um, uh, living thing. Uh, living, uh, um, so you can uh, determine the age of the, uh, how to say, plant or fossils, okay? okay? So some the organism which is already died long ago, okay? Um, so the 
uh, carbon 14 have the half life of roughly roughly uh, 5730 30 years okay so that's you can use it cal to calculate back um, the age of the of that uh, die thing okay um, this topic you you should practice okay it's not just listen to me and then you understand but you need to try to do the calculation there are several exercises on the of, of on this carbon dating or even on the beta or alpha decay so at least you try to follow exercise on survey okay you uh, selected some of that if you don't have time to finish them all okay for example every three problems every four problems just try to do it and then when you kick start you start to learn several things from exercises okay um so last one of the dk uh process it's uh called the um alpha uh, uh gamma decay okay so in the gamma decay so you have the unstable atomic nuclei which then spontaneous which means happen by itself uh, elect, uh electromagnetic radiations okay so you can write a symbol so you have a x c in the excited states become a x c plus uh, radiation so which is the photons okay and this is uh the examples so you have boron okay the boron can decay directly to the um, carbon 12 or it can decay to the carbon 12 but excited state and then the, from the excited state go to the um, uh, stable state okay in, in, in this case it produces the radiations okay it can be in both way okay as i mentioned that the decay process the the activity process it's random and we need to to describe by the statistic okay okay so next it's about the uh, nuclear um, reaction Um, in the nuclear reactions, so it doesn't need to be uh, alpha decay, beta decay, uh, gamma decay. So you can do several things. For example, you have the nucleus and then you try to bombard the nucleus by some particles. Okay, so you use the particle A bombard to the nucleus of X to produce the nucleus of Y and then it's produced some small particle. So whatever. Okay. Um, sometimes people write this this uh, symbol so x a b and y okay so this is what we call the uh, nuclear reactions okay and from the nuclear reaction you can uh, calculate the reaction energies q okay so q is basically um, the mass of the parent side so the mass of the um, a okay plus the mass of the x minus mass of the y minus mass of the b and then c square okay and this is what we call the reaction energies okay it's the difference between initial and final rest energy resulting from the interactions okay so since this process they don't have anything to control i mean they don't really have to say that this is need to be positive if we're talking about the disintegration energy yes that need to be positive but for the nuclear reaction no it doesn't we can just bombard thing and see what's going to happen right so it's possible that to have the exothermic so it's uh gonna be plus q so it's positive so in this case you get the energy you get the heat out okay but if it's endothermic so it's minus q if it's minus the process will not happen okay unless the uh, bombarding uh, particles 
has the kinetic energies above Q. Okay. If the Q is minus, process will not happen in a natural way. It cannot happen uh, by itself. But if uh, the energy that of the particle that we bombard, so we put the energy to A, for example, it's bombard X. If the kinetic energy of A is larger than Q, the process can happen. Okay. Um, there is a question in survey about this. Uh, it's questions of the chapter 44, problem 74. Okay. In survey. So it tried to prove the threshold um, energies. Okay. So let's try to do that. Okay, so last topic, we are talking about the uh, nuclear fusion and nuclear fissions, but both of them come with uh, one key, one key, just that, and do understand everything about the nuclear fission and fusions. Um, in nuclear fission and nuclear fusions, we are talking about the particle that combine or breaking to a new particle, uh, sorry, a new nuclei. With the binding energy of the new, uh, the new nuclei is larger than the binding energy of the uh, parents. Okay, so we are talking about, um, for example, um, you have Two, part, uh, two nuclei here, and it's try to form a bigger um, nuclei. Okay, but if you're looking in this uh, formula, uh, this plot, sorry, this is the trend, right? Okay, so it's mean that the product, in this case, it has larger binding energies. Okay, and what's gonna happen? And then if you look on another side, you have a big nuclei, and then it starts to breaking. Okay. So uh, the trend is the same. So you go from lower binding energy to higher binding energies. Okay. From lower binding energy to higher binding energies. Okay. So um, you have small in nuclei and then you get the big one okay so binding energy increase what does it mean it means that you have the mass defected you have the delta m right you have more mass if you calculate mass um i do, i don't have the example of this fission but i can give you the fusion thing so the mass of this term is larger than the mass of this of this of of the daughter so you have the defected mass when you have the defected mass it means it convert to the energy okay so when you do fission this is what we call uh, fusion sorry um, when you do fusions you fuse the small nuclei and then you create the big one and then what you get is the energy. Okay, and the key point is that because the big one have a larger, a bigger binding energies, so it have less mass than uh, the parents. Okay, so when you have the less, less mass, so you have the defected mass or so the mass difference and that thing convert to the energies. Uh, if you think about the the uh, the fusion uh, the fission here, you have a big nuclei, and then you have a small um, nuclei breaking. Okay. Again, you break into the small pieces, which have 
a higher binding energies. This side have the higher binding energies. It means you have the mass defected. Okay, you put more energy to break this one instead of this one. So if you balance the energy, you see that there is more energy on this on this side. Okay, so it means that it gives you the energy. Okay, so when it's breaking, it gives you the energies. Okay, so you can create the energy from both sides of this um, binding energy per nucleon plot. Okay, if you make uh, the breaking, so if you break in this way, oops, sorry, if you break in this way, you create the energy. If you fuse in this way, you create the energies. Okay, so we can use this technique to create the energies. So this is um, so from this side, it's the uh, the fission. So it's nuclear power plant, for example, and this is the fusion. So the technology that we are looking for. Okay. So, for the nuclear fusions, um, uh, you take the massive nucleus like uranium-235 and break it apart as the uh, fissions, okay? And then um, you will see that there will be um, what we call a net yield of the energy because the sum of the mass of the fragment will be less than the mass of the uranium. Okay, so you have the the sentence called say you that you have the deflected mass and that deflected mass gives you the energies. Okay, so if you take this process, um, you take one neutron plus the Euro uranium two T five. Get uh, beryllium's uh, one for one plus uh, krypton ninety two plus two or three neutron three neutrons okay three of neutrons okay um, you can open the table and looking for the mass okay. So the mass of the uranium is 235 uh, 0.043930. For beryllium is 140.914411. Uh, for krypton is 91.926. One five six. Okay, for neutron, it's basically one point zero zero eight six six five per neutron. Okay, and then you use the calculator. You're gonna get the mass difference. Okay, let's me. I forget to write the final number. Two five and five. It's roughly 0 0.186033U. Okay. So it's become 175.29 mega electron volt per C square. Okay. So this is the energy you will get. Okay. Um, you can estimate, okay, uh, by the, the the binding energy per nucleon, okay. So um, what I mean is that if you consider um, uranium, okay, if you're looking the plot of the uranium, so you get the the idea of the binding energy per nucleon. It can be seven point something, okay. For example, 7.2. And then for the um, 
the big one like the uh, the small one like beryllium or kryptons the binding energy is um 8.2 mev for example okay so the difference is roughly 1 mev okay and this is for one nucleon okay so um then if you take talking about 275 uh sorry 235 nucleons we are talking about 235 mega electron volt okay so this two it look different that's correct that's fine i mean this is what we estimate okay this is what we estimate this is what we really measure from the mass i mean we calculate it from the mass that we measure so if you would like to get more um you need to do more balance of these things so if it's come to be very close mass okay so you're gonna get more energies but as i say the process is random okay uranium can do several things okay so uranium can be um decay to these terms or this uh, strontium and xenons and this is for whatever element is okay and this is for another whatever so it can create something randomly so you cannot really control which one it's going to happen it's happened by the probabilities okay and this is continuous process because when you inject one neutrons you get um, three neutrons a t three neutrons interact with the materials you get you get another three neutrons and, and so on so on okay so if you don't control it it's going to make um, the releasing of the big energy so that is the the bomb okay but if you can control for example you can absorb the access the extra neutrons um, you can control that then you can make um, the power pads okay because you can if you detect and you say ah they have more neutrons it's more interaction you try to absorb the neutrons okay using the the control rod the carbon rods okay so you control the number of neutron in the in uh, in the nuclear um, tank okay so then you can control the releasing of the energies and that control of the releasing of the energies um, so it's mean that you can really create the electricity from that okay so it's going to the liquid water with the high pressure and then uh, it's sent to the stream tank so the the heat is observed by the water so it's go to the turbine and then it's condensed back go back to the tank and this uh, stream of the high pressure liquids go back to the uh, nuclear tanks and then start this process again okay so this is um, how the nuclear reactor works um last topic it's about the nuclear fusions so we try to fuse uh light nuclei okay so we try to fuse the light nuclei to form the heavy nucleus so this is what we call the nuclear fusion so we try to fuse light nuclei to form a heavier one okay um again this is what i already say so because of the mass of the final nucleus is less than the combined mass so the uh, the process released the energies okay so in this pro process is called the um proton cycles okay so the proton cycle starting from the proton and proton going to be the uh two right let's check um i forget something ah, i forget electrons yeah uh positron sorry positrons plus the neutrinos okay so the charge is conserved so you have one one charge from the protons you have one charge from the proton with the um larger um with the neutron okay and then 
uh, you inject one more proton to the uh, hydrogen atom with mass two, so it's become helium. Okay, it's become helium three, two, three plus um, photons. Okay, and after that, you try to fuse the helium three together. You get helium, the alpha particle, right? And then you get back two protons. Okay, so this is um, this is the first step. Okay, this fuse is the second step. Okay, and this one is the third step. Okay, clear. Okay, so this happened, and then you say that ah, now you get the the proton back, and that's uh, the process continue. Okay, so this is what we call one proton proton cycles. Um, if you try to calculate the uh, the energy that release, it's easy because you need to think about what's come in and what go out. So what go in is six protons. Why I say six? Because this is one, two, three, four, five, six. Right? What mass is out? It's helium plus two protons. Right? So the effect that mass it's coming from a mass of the uh, of the four uh, protons, right? You have you cancel. Um, you you get in six, you get out two. So the mass difference is four coming from four protons, minus mass of the um, helium two four. Okay. Um, so you can put the number. So this. Proton is 1.007825U. This helium is 4.002603U. You get the energy. It's equal to this number minus this number minus this number. Okay, and times 300, sorry, 931.5 MeV per U. What you get is seven twenty six point seven mega electron volts. Okay, so this is the energy that you get uh, from the uh, fusions. Okay, I think this is all for the nuclear physics. Okay, hope that you enjoy. That sorry that we need to go very squeeze on this. Okay, um, the topic in. In uh, in this semester, it's quite squeezed on the um, you know you have a big topic of the special relativities and quantum, which is the new thing, atomic, which is very new, and then the nuclear physics. Okay, so that's why it's uh, quite heavy for you for everyone. Okay. Okay, great. So I think we are done at this point. Um, thank you very much for following the course. Okay, and hope that you can do the final exam. Okay, as I say, we cannot have the tutorial class for this um, course. So try to practice uh, exercises in survey. Okay, thank you everyone and good luck. Bye bye.